We are halfway through August already, a month and a half into FY23. Where does time go? We've got a big episode in the technology portfolio and planning update this month. We're going to cover all things that happened in July. But even more importantly, we're going to give you a quick recap on how we finished off FY22. If you haven't heard, Group Technology did extremely well. So well done to everyone. I know it's been a little while since you've had a Jakey update. Well, he's now six months old, growing bigger every day and couldn't ask for a more perfect baby. For those of you who are watching this update, just to see if there's going to be a picture of Jake there, well, I wouldn't want to disappoint. But on a more serious note, along with covering the FY22 review and the beginning of FY23, the July review, we're also going to be covering the new band rates that are coming. They'll kick in in September. We'll cover that. We'll also touch on the new GL code that has been added. So if you do SAP reports, you may need to take action on that one. We're also going to look at the hamburger menu that's been implemented in our Tableau dashboards. So if you're getting hungry, stay tuned for that one. And we also want to talk to you about our new YouTube site. Obviously, you've found it because you're watching this video. This channel is going to be a place where you'll be able to find all of our previous videos that we've done, along with any new training videos that we're going to be releasing over the next couple of months. The exciting part of the new YouTube channel, though, is, of course, I'm now going to be able to say you can like and subscribe below. Also below, you're going to find all the links to the slide pack that's associated with this, our dashboards, and any other links that I mentioned within the video. But right now, let's get into my favorite segment, Fun with Numbers. It is fun with numbers time, where we get to look at all things FY22 and FY23 in terms of our capital result. FY22, we'll start with that one. What a fantastic result we had for FY22. We landed within 0.14% of our capital budget. This is an amazing effort from all of the domains and all of the project teams to get there. And this result really enhances the trust that the corporate finance have in our ability to say what we're going to spend our money on and actually spending it on those. You'll also see that the forecast accuracy for FY22 was consistently above 90% and usually around the 95, 96% for most domains. In terms of cost recovery, that was also a fantastic result from all domains. We had $0 of unentered time and we only had about $150,000 of unapproved time. Getting our timesheets in and getting them approved really does help our OPEX position. And that's another area that group technology did really well in, in FY22. We deployed more than 25,000 assets in almost 5,000 store or DC visits. That is an amazing accomplishment. And it really increases the resilience and availability of all of our systems across all the sites that Woolworths has. Looking at the spend profile for FY22, we can see that there was a a little bit of a hockey stick in June. There was a push right of the forecasts from about March onwards into that June period. As I mentioned at the start of the video, great effort from all of the domains, all of the projects, program teams, and everyone else involved in getting us over the line in FY22. But as you know, there's no rest for the wicked, and FY23 is already a month and a half in. The FY23 budget, slightly higher than the FY22 budget at 225 million. This capital will be spent across approximately 145 projects. 75 of those projects are already in flight and had actuals in July already. Looking at the split of the budget, 55% of that will be spent on capacity replacement, 42 on enhancements, continuous improvement, technical improvements, etc., as well as 3% on transformational work. The July month also kicked off with a good result for the actuals versus forecast at 93%. Looking at the spend profile for FY23, we can see a couple of really important aspects to this graph. One is the salary and wages, the blue uh, bar at the bottom of this graph. That is reasonably consistent across the financial year. The red, the hardware spend, is mostly in H1, which is where we want to see that hardware spend. And then we see the yellow in H2. Not all, but a large majority of that is the rollout of the assets that we're planning on buying in H1. So we expect that to increase throughout half two. If we look at the forecast accuracy for July, we had a good start to the year here also. 
we're looking at low to high 90s across all of the domains, which is a fantastic result again. Really important to keep that up throughout the financial year. It gives us a good certainty around where we're going to land with the capital, how much capital we have for other projects. We are already oversubscribed by about $6 million on that $225 million budget. So that's it for Fun With Numbers, a great result for FY22, a fantastic start to FY23. So right now, let's have a look at the cost recovery update. It is only early in the financial year, but what better time to start good timesheet hygiene than in quarter one? We will start off this quick update with a look at where group technology is in regards to timesheet compliance. Then we'll have a look at the new GL code that's just been added to SAP. And we'll finish by looking at a great time-saving option in the bulk timesheet entry. So let's get straight into timesheet compliance. If we look at the latest timesheet compliance dashboard, we can see about 830,000 of unapproved time. Although this isn't too bad for this time of the year, we do need all of those timesheets approved as unapproved timesheets do hit our OPEX budget through our cost centers and impacts the OPEX position for the overall group technology. So it is important that we get those timesheets approved as soon as possible. If we look at the unentered time, that's sitting about $580,000. It isn't too bad for this time of the month, but we do need everyone to get the timesheets in at the end of every week so that they can be approved by the end of the financial month. The key message here is that we do want everyone to get into those good habits of putting their timesheets in weekly and making sure that they are approved. Let's have a quick look at the new GL code. As you can see on this slide, the main change is the new 990010 GL code that is being used for fixed price resources. Previously, these people cost were grouped together with permanent resources under the 990001 code. This caused a lot of additional manual processing for both the finance team and other teams doing reports on their people costs. With this new 990010 code, we'll be able to separate those fixed price team members from permanent team members in our reporting in a more efficient way. A key thing to note with this change though, is that if you are running SAP reports, you will need to add this new GL code to your report to ensure that all the numbers balance. Okay, did someone say time-saving? We all love a good time-saving initiative, and this one has been around with us since the dawn of time, but it's important just to remember that you can put in a bulk timesheet in SAP if you are working on a BAU task that covers the entire financial year or long-running projects. The great thing about putting in a bulk timesheet is that it doesn't limit the ability of a PM or a line manager from rejecting time or asking a team member to go back and re-enter their time into pets or even put leave in if you're going on leave halfway through the year. But it does mean that you can just put one timesheet in for an extended period of time up until the end of the financial year. If you'd like more information on this, it is linked in the pack below. Also, the links to the timesheet compliance dashboard is also in the description. Right now, Let's look at the Tableau dashboards. Let's have a look at all things in the technology data analytics space. We're going to look today at the new menuing option that we have on most of our dashboards. We're moving from the standard Tableau filtering system, which to be honest, isn't that aesthetically pleasing, to a new hamburger menu that hides these filters away inside the three little bars. As you can see in the top left corner of this slide pack, you can see the three little lines that kind of look like a hamburger. When you click on this, the filters will pop out and you'll be able to make your selections before pressing the X and it goes away. This makes the page a lot cleaner. And when you print the dashboard out or want to put it into a slide pack, you won't get all those filters at the top there. It is on some of our dashboards at the moment. It will be on all of our dashboards quite soon. There is a video on this on our YouTube channel, so check that one out. In other dashboards, the utilization dashboard is now up to date. It has all of the new targets set and will be displayed correctly for FY23. Timesheet compliance dashboard is also now updated to be looking at FY23, so check out that one and get to all of our dashboards at woolworths.my slash itda. woolworths.my slash itda. The link is in the description below. So let's now have a look at some of the key dates. Let's look at all the important dates that are coming up for August and September. As we can see that there is one more PGF in September, that meeting will be held on the 1st of September. 
A key date also is the end of financial month, the 4th of September. The reason why this is so important this time is because on the 5th of September, the new band rates will kick in. So this means when you're doing your forecasts and your forecasts need to be locked by the 8th of September, you will need to take into account the new band rate increases. As most of you would have heard by now, the band rates are going up by an average of around 4.5%. This doesn't mean that every band rate goes up equally, as there's various other inputs to those band rates. Some band rates will go up slightly less, some slightly more, depending on a number of factors and inputs. Band rates are a blended rate of the resources and on costs that are associated with that particular band. The important thing to note with this, though, is that all projects should be reforecasting their projects by the 8th of September, which is a forecast lock date, and ensuring that this doesn't impact the EAC, and if it does, that they can account for that within their current budget. If the change of forecast is going to impact your project significantly, please talk to your head of delivery. If you do have any questions on the band rates, please contact Ryan Harvey from my team. Other key dates, there are two PGFs in September, one on the 15th of September and one on the 29th of September, and the month end on the 2nd of October. That's a wrap for this newsletter. I hope you enjoyed it. The key messages to really take away is the group technology did extremely well. In FY22, we finished 0.14% off our capital target. FY23, all the domains have set this up extremely well as well. We've got 145 projects all set up, 75 of which charged in July. We also have around 90% of our forecasts in Sentient for FY23, and 64% of our EAs have already been released to projects so that they can start spending Fantastic results in both FY22 and 23. Also remember, band rates do increase on the 5th of September, so make sure you check your projects for that. And if you haven't seen it yet, go check out our new hamburger menu on our Tableau dashboards. It's a small change, but we do feel that it makes the dashboards that little bit more usable. I know we always hear it too often, but hit the subscribe button below so that you get notified whenever we release a new monthly update or any of our training videos or other process and framework videos that we will be releasing throughout this financial year. Thank you for watching.